In this video, I will show you how to find scroll depth data in Google Analytics 4 reports. In this video, I assume that you have already installed Google Analytics in Google Tag Manager, which means that you have the Google tag with your GA4 measurement ID. If you haven't done that yet, then I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. And then also, I assume that you have already implemented scroll tracking. Even though Google Analytics 4 tracks scrolls automatically, that kind of tracking is very limited because it tracks only when the visitor reaches the 90% of the page height, which means almost the bottom. Now, personally, if you want to track scrolls, I would recommend tracking more thresholds. For example, in this case, I'm tracking 25%, 50, 75, and technically you could also include 90. And then I send the events to Google Analytics 4. The event name will be scroll 25 or scroll 50 or 75. And then also I send the percent scrolled parameter with the actual number. It can be 25, 50, 75, and technically you could also send 90 or whatever else you want. So if you haven't done this kind of setup, then I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. So when you have implemented custom scroll tracking and you have waited for a while, then you will start seeing those events in your reports. For example, if I go to GA4 and the events report, I see scroll 25, scroll 50, scroll 75. So now let's say that you want to see how many people scrolled on a particular page to 25% height, 50%, and 75. One of the ways how you could do that is to create an exploration. So let's go to explore, then click blank. And then here we will need to add several dimensions and metrics. So in the dimensions, click plus, and then add page path. And then you can select either with query string or without it, I will select without it, then select event name, because we will narrow down just to certain events, which are related to scroll tracking. And then we also want to see those thresholds. Therefore, we will type percent scrolled, then click confirm. And in the metrics, we can click plus and add at least event count because we want to know how many times was that particular threshold reached. And then if you want, you could also add, let's say total users. So let's select this and confirm. Now we can add to the report these two dimensions, which are page path and percent scrolled. Let's double click on page path, then percent scrolled. And then we will also double click on these metrics to add them to the report. So now we see the page path, then the percentage, and then the event count with total users. Now you might be wondering why we don't see actual percentage values. We just see empty cells right here. That is because right now this report is including all events, not just scroll events. Therefore, we have to make our report more precise. So we can go to filters, click here, event name, and then we can look only for those events that contain the word scroll and then hit apply. So now we see a bunch of pages and then we see the thresholds, the event counts and total users. If you want to look at a particular page, then you should add another filter. For example, we can click here, then page path. And let's say that we want to look only at the home page. So page path should exactly match slash because that's the home page and then click apply. We could technically also use the nested rows because these three rows are related to the same page. So if we click yes in the nested rows, then we see this kind of like one entry and then three nested values. So on this page, this many users reached the 25% threshold, then this many users reached 50 and then 75. If you're thinking that it would be also nice to see the 0%, which means that you would know the number of how many people actually landed on the page and just started seeing it without even scrolling, there are several options. One option, which I honestly don't recommend, but technically you could go to the scroll trigger and then enter zero, but it means that on each page, you will have one more additional event that will fire immediately once Google Analytics 4 loads. And if you have millions of page views, it means that you will get millions more events that are just for the scroll depth zero. And if you have a lot of events in your reports, you will hit sampling limits much faster. So honestly, I would not recommend this. Instead, technically, you could send percent scrolled zero with each page view. You're already tracking page views and they are sent automatically. 
So here, technically, you could just send percent scroll with the page view event. It will not increase your overall event count, but in this report, we would also start seeing the zero. So here's what you could do. First of all, you need to know that when you go on Analytics 4 fires, it sends the page view automatically. To send this parameter with the page view event and only page view, and I mean not user engagement events or any other automatically tracked events, you should first disable automatically tracked page view right here. So in the Google tag, you should add a new parameter in the configuration settings, which is called send page view, and it should be set to false. So now this will load Google Analytics on a page, but it will not send the page view. Then you would need to create a new event tag for that page view. So Google Analytics, then GA for event, paste the measurement ID, which is the same as in your Google tag, and here enter exactly page view. Together with this page view, we also want to send the percent scrolled parameter, which is exactly the same as it was in the scroll event. And here the value will be zero. So every time the page reloads, this event will be fired and we will send the 0% scrolled parameter. Then in the triggering, we should fire this tag later than the initialization. So it could be all pages or DOM ready. So let's fire DOM ready so that the Google tag would have more time to properly load. In this case, we will just set this to DOM ready, save, and then let's name this G for event page view. Normally, you don't need to set the page title or page refer or page location in here because this tag will take this automatically. Unless, of course, you have some custom setup or maybe you're working with single page applications and, of course, you would need to do that. But in general, this percent tracking with single page applications doesn't work properly anyway. What I'm showing you here works well with regular websites where each page reloads as the user navigates. So now let's save this. And in general, the principle would look like this. The visitor lands on your site, then Google tag will fire first because initialization is one of the earliest triggers. Then after several moments, the page view will fire on DOM ready. And with that page view, we will send percent scroll zero. And then as the user continues to navigate, let's say scrolls down, then we send other thresholds with the scroll events. And once you publish these changes and collect data for a while, then you could also see in the report zero right here. So if you take this approach, then you would need to do one more modification in the report because right now this report is looking only at the scroll events. But remember that we are sending zero with the page view event. So this is the zero, this is the event name. This event with this kind of filter would not be included. So to see the zero, we would also need to change the filter. Instead of contains scroll, we should use matches regex and then type the following regular expression, which should be dot asterisk, then open and close parentheses dot asterisk. And inside, we will enter scroll or, which is a pipe, page view. So if any event contains the word scroll, which is scroll 25, scroll 50, whatever, or page view, then this report would also include zero. Well, technically, in this kind of context, the regular expression could be also written differently. For example, scroll dot asterisk or just page view. This would also work just fine. And then you would click apply and that zero would appear right here. Of course, I think you would also see an empty row because you would have a lot of previously tracked page views that do not have the percent scroll. So if you want to avoid that, another option, how to write a filter would be to use not the event name, but instead just percent scroll, where you could type like this. The filter would be using the percent scroll, and then if percent scroll matches regex and then let's say 25 or 50 or 75 and if you have other thresholds you could also type them here and again there are many ways how to achieve the same result your regular expression could be looking just for numbers or for any other values so again this is very flexible but in general this is how it would work also we would need to enter the zero and then would hit apply and this would also work just fine if you want to build something like this in standard reports, here's how you can do that. So let's go to reports. 
then you can go to library and here you should click create new report, create detail report, then select blank. And when working with standard reports, you can have primary dimensions and secondary dimensions. But the problem right now when I'm recording this video is that you cannot add percent scrolled as a secondary dimension unless you register it as a custom dimension. But if you don't want to register a custom dimension, then here's the approach that could technically work. So in the add dimensions section, click here, or you can click here, that will do the same thing. And here type percent scrolled, then click apply. And in metrics, you can add, let's say again, event count, and total users, click apply, we can also hide, I think the charts, not sure if they're useful. And here we have three thresholds, I'm not tracking zeros because I haven't implemented that in the past, but we have an empty row. So to avoid that, we can add a filter where we are looking for the event name that contains scroll, click apply. And this is what we have. Then we want to add a page path to add a secondary dimension. You can click plus here and then type page path. So now you will see a bunch of different percent scrolled thresholds and then the page path here in the search, whenever you will be using this report, you could just type, let's say, courses, then enter, and you will see only particular pages. Now, if you are stuck in a situation like me here, where you want to look this, but then you also include this and include other pages, then there will be another workaround. But for now, let's save this as it is while I have the percent scrolled and I have the secondary dimension. So let's click save, then let's call this let's say scrolling and hit save, then I will go back and I will edit the collection so that this report would appear somewhere on the sidebar. Let's click three dots right here, edit. And then let's say that I will add the scrolling report to the engagement section. So let's look for the scrolling. And now I will drag it somewhere right here, save and save changes to the current collection, then go back. And here we will see that scrolling report, we see the percent scrolled, we see the page path. But as you can see, we have a bunch of different URLs. Let's say that I want to see only homepage typing slash here will not work because this search bar is looking with contains operator all of these URLs contain the slash. Therefore, I would need to update my filter, I can click here, and then add new condition where page path exactly matches. And then let's say homepage, then I click apply. And now I will be looking only at the data of this particular page. If I go to any other report, and then go back, the filter will reset again to the default setting of this report. Because when you are editing the filter right here, that editing happens only for this particular moment, it does not actually change the settings of the report, which is quite useful, because maybe the next day you will want to see what is happening on a page where page path exactly matches courses. And there you have it. And that's how you can find scroll data in Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.